Hey everybody and welcome to Nicole Sauce's Thought of the Walk. Today we are out. Look, it's it's a big day. It's a big day. I think we're at episode 50 today. And I'm wearing flannel. That's right. It's mid-September and I'm in flannel. It's a little early for Tennessee, honestly, but it is what it is. It's flannel season in the holler. And we kind of go from flannel season to, oh my god, it's ice. If we're going to have ice. But it goes flannel season, short season. Flannel season, short season, flannel season, short season, most of the time. And we usually don't break beyond flannel season for very long if we do at all. That's just the way our weather goes here. But we're queuing up for an early cold, which means I'll be taking out some of the outdoor things I put in place when it looks like it's going to get into the mid-30s, like 35 or so. And the things I get to disassemble include an outdoor shower, and two outdoor hand washing sinks that are hooked up to water and then I drain those pipes out and blow air through them so they will not, you know, freeze and become gross. Last year everybody promised me that if we left the hand washing faucet out but everything was drained it would be fine. It was not fine. The ice froze inside the internals of that faucet and it now leaks out the bottom. Luckily it's outside so it's okay but my outdoor sink, like in the outdoor kitchen where I do canning, I don't want that faucet to get ruined. So it's coming out. There's a dishwasher we use for events. That's coming out and getting protected so that it does not freeze so that we can use it again next year during event season. And that means the next two events I have, I'm going to have to be creative about how we wash hands and have hot and cold water outside. Luckily, I have that to my hose spigots. And going to have to, you know, think about what cooking looks like when I don't have this really awesome outdoor kitchen, which I've gotten super used to. It's got this giant sink that I can put stock pots in. And going into winter, I end up still using my, my stock pots. So homesteads on the winter, in the winter, you know, technically I'm not canning a bunch of stuff in the, in the winter, but I am processing animals and that means bone broth. And I do can the bone broth, although now with the freeze dryer, I'll probably freeze dry a lot of it just because it takes up a lot less space and fewer canning jars to store it and it's nice and easy to reconstitute so that'll be kind of cool um, when you can broth you need to boil it before you use it right just in case you did something wrong when you were canning it and the freeze dryer kind of eliminates the need for that and as i said it, what would be a quart jar is going to be maybe a cup of powder maybe a little bit more. We'll see. I'll measure that when I when I do my next real batch. My first batch, I just was like, hey, does this taste good? Tastes good. Okay. So that's ready to go. Anyway, today I am thinking about how y'all are screwing up with each other. Okay. Well, I am too sometimes, right? We're pushing back on mandates. We're in the right. You should not force people to do with their body what they do not want to do with their body. And this goes across the board. If you're intellectually consistent on this, you mean this no matter what, right? If you are saying mandates of vaccines are not okay, but it's okay to keep drugs illegal, then you have a conflict you should be thinking about. But I was on the internet. Don't argue with people on the internet. Anyway, I was on the internet. Somebody posted something about trusting the experts and how, you know, basically you should trust the experts and not do your own research. And the research you say you're doing isn't really research because you're not in the lab doing the actual research. Because apparently reading research studies is not, you know, equivalent to being the scientist in the lab and you should just trust the scientist. Well, I said, you know, that's not how science works. Science works by asking questions and then when you have the answer, what you think is the answer, you ask the question again, you replicate it. And so it is healthy to encourage the questioning of the research. And it's healthy for lay people to read the studies and, to, and interpret them. like. That's good, they may discover something. At one point in our lives, experts told us that the Earth was flat. I don't believe the Earth is flat, maybe you do, but based on subsequent study, I believe the Earth is not flat, right? Experts told us that washing your hands was not necessary to maintain a sterile environment when treating medical patients. Hmm, we all know how that went, right? So experts have told us a lot of things that turn out not to be true, and there is no reason to believe in 2021 that our experts can't make mistakes. Further, most people are reposting these science things in response to COVID. 
and the vaccine or COVID and ivermectin or COVID and hydroxychloroquine or whatever, right? And they're using it to justify um, not allowing you your bodily autonomy in a lot of ways and bemoaning, bemoaning that people haven't 100% gotten the shot. And I'm watching this go down and I was like, well, listen, we should question the science. We should question the studies. We should do our independent research. Research. That's how science works. If you don't let that happen, like, why is this expert better than that expert? And the answers I got made assumptions about me personally. One, that I am pushing ivermectin as the magical solution to COVID. Two, that I believe that people who are sick were inseminated with Satan's sperm. And three, they make assumptions about whether or not I have chosen to get the jab. And then they attack me personally. Yeah, that's that's how our conversation is going. You know what? Don't go on the internet and defend me and fight them back because you know what? If you do that, you're doing what they do. So what we have here is a situation where people, when I say anything, anything at all, reasonable, it's a reasonable thing to assert the scientific method should be used and that we should encourage questioning and debate and discussion, right? So when that turns into personal attacks and assumptions about my own personal decisions without any verification at all, we know they're already brainwashed. They have already gone over beyond help unless they help themselves. And I'm not the person who's going to shine a light on that, right? I basically ended with, I'm disappointed in all y'all because you made these assumptions about me and you don't know, first of all. And this is exactly what I was talking about when I said the politicization of the issue is the problem. You are acting in a political way. They won't see it. It doesn't matter. Um, don't go out there and defend me on that because that just makes it worse. That makes them dig their heels in further, right? But if we get into fist fights and unnecessary arguments on the internet in particular, we are also playing into the, into the narrative. We are also helping the other side dig their heels in and go more and more and more and more extreme. And we shouldn't do that. I think a better approach is we share the truth that we see. We share information from a reasoned standpoint. We back stuff up. When we say, hey, I think the statistics they're releasing about who's sick, if they're vaccinated or not vaccinated, is incorrect. You better have made some phone calls to some actual hospitals and verified it and have a source. Have two sources, have three sources. Don't just say, I heard Jenny, I heard Jenny say it, so it must be true. You need to verify your own. That's the way that is. Because I can tell you this, I've made those calls. And at one hospital, 40% unvaccinated, 60, I'm sorry, 40% vaccinated, 60% unvaccinated were sick. Most of them elderly or extremely obese people were in the ICU. Another hospital nearby me, about 99% unvaccinated, 1% vaccinated. Similar comorbidities, right? So that's, that's how you can see, like maybe the statistic is right of 95.5. I don't know. I know from one hospital to another, the numbers are greatly different. And I also know in the first example, the numbers they released are not the numbers that two people who work there told me about. So... That's why I'm saying you need to do your own digging and come to your own conclusions as best you can in this world and not depend on the statistics. Second thing, the booster shot. Booster shot's been recommended 65 and above and people who are at risk, right? Excuse me, I need to call my dogs. Sissy, come here. Sissy. They weren't running after something. This is the way we set a foundation for there to be a problem. Anyway, um, that booster shot, that booster shot, it's not recommended for other people yet. And people who believe in the religion of the experts are upset. And the CDC is now going against the FDA. This is just a pissing match, guys. Stay out of it. Don't worry about it. It is interesting to me, like the organization, the FDA, who is kind of corporate insider organization in our government, if they're saying there's not enough research yet, 
to recommend this below 65 because the research we have is over 65. Shouldn't we listen to them? Like, they're the people who are inclined to approve the thing, right? There's a lot of pressure on them to approve the thing, and they're saying, nope, not yet. That's telling. That's telling. And to then just, like, say, yes, it's safe because the FDA says it's safe, and then say, but the booster is safe too, even though the FDA doesn't say it's safe, is completely inconsistent. When people are going down that line, just ignore them. That's inconsistent. And they don't care. They don't care. They have bought into the corporate narrative so strongly without questioning it, questioning motivations, anything, they can't be helped. You know who can be helped? The majority of people who I talk to. I know a whole bunch of, like I go out, I purposely look for people who don't agree with me. I talk to them. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And a lot of them have some really good perspectives. It's changed my perspective talking to them. And they share their, their experience with getting the jab or not getting the jab. And the majority of them who I talk to don't want the mandates. Also, Newsweek came out today. You know what they said? Black Lives Matter is about to be in conflict with the democratic narrative because um, the mandates disproportionately impact non-whites because non-whites have a higher percentage of non-adoption. It's not because of access, guys. Non-whites have every reason not to trust the federal government, right? And the way this has been spun out and the way this has been messaged has made it even harder to trust. <laughs> like, it's almost as if they want this division. Hmm. You know what? If they want this division, don't participate. Just do your best to shine a light on the truth and don't get into those cat fights because they don't help you. Hope you'll think about this on this Friday as we go into a lovely weekend where you can... If you're not working, work for yourself. Make your life 1% more stable, more self-sustaining. Also, don't forget, we have the Self-Reliance Festival coming up in Camden, Tennessee on October 23rd. I've got some great demos. We've got cheese making, beer making, welding, um, aquaponics, hydroponics, cast iron. Gosh, what else? Probably knife throwing. Nobody's come up to put in a demo application for that. If they don't, I'll uh, find somebody. I need somebody with throwing knives so I have the backstop. And we have a guy coming in there about emergency medical assistance when you're trying to help keep somebody alive till the EMTs get there. Lots of really cool stuff and freedom discussions will happen. Um, the freedom, like the, what is it? Freedom Cells Network. It's also having an event in Nashville that Sunday. So you can come to ours and go to theirs. I'm hoping to get some of them down to Camden. We have sold out about half the tickets. At this point, $30 a shot, or if you want to sell your wares as a vendor or give a demo, we still have some demo slots opening. Um, by the way, if you put a demo in, um, we are sharing the profit from the event among the demo people. I don't know what that amount will be because it's fully dependent on expenses and ticket sales. But that's all over at livingfreeintennessee.com. It's the Self-Reliance Festival. Check it out and make it a great week.